What's up everyone, uh, back from a little bit of a break, I've been really really busy with the cabinets and whatnot, um, testing a few other things out, getting an air supply sorted, um, so I'll cover a bit of that later in the video, but I want to head now to something that I've been looking at doing for quite a long time now. Um, I've been putting aside the parts and I've just wanted to get sort of an hour or so where I can sit down, work out, make sure I've got everything I need and then put it together and I finally had that over the weekend just been um, so I put it all together and I've just gone through into testing and I'm happy enough with where I'm at um, to suggest that I'm actually going to be able to make something of this so um, I wanted to get into powder coating a while ago I've been talking to a few people um, probably for about a year now and I keep saying that I want to get into it and I just don't so I finally got to the point where I could put together the things that I wanted to and um, and actually have a go of it and, and, and just see what I can do on a low budget. With all my stuff, like I started with the cabinets, I wanted to make things accessible um, and I wanted to see just how cheaply I could do this. So I've managed to put together a gun. Um, it's still a little bit rudimentary at the moment, but I think I can make uh, some pretty good improvements without spending too much money. So at this stage, I've sent, spent about $14, $15 uh, in New Zealand. Uh, which is about $10 US um, on my uh, entire setup, um, excluding the powders. So uh, this is just what I need to actually apply the powders. Uh, powders I spent about $30, so it's about $20 US. Um, but I'm just going to go over with what I've got now. Let me just turn this around. So here is the first test piece. Um, it's just a lifting bracket off an engine. So... It's by no means perfect, but this is the first piece that I've actually done. Um, and it wasn't actually on, I, I didn't spend that much time prepping the part. I gave it a quick sandblast, uh, hit it with a brake clean, rubbed it off, and um, applied some powder. So um, that's where I got, first of all, and you can see at the moment where it was clipped on, it missed that part. I wasn't worried about that. I wanted to make sure it applied, and then I wanted to make sure it baked. Um, I head across now. This is what I baked it in. So it's an old toaster oven. It's actually um, our old one from um, from my house. We replaced it not long ago because all of a sudden it stopped working. Uh, I pulled it apart and what had happened is it got so hot one of the uh, wires had come off the end of the element. So um, I, I just uh, reattached that and it seems to be working um, not perfectly but it works well enough for what we're doing. Um, so now I want to go into the gun. This is it here. So as most of you that watch my channel will probably already recognize, this is off a, a sandblast. It's just one of those cheap little box ones that sits on your bench top. Um, I took the front off it. The rest is old scrap brass pieces, um, fittings. I've chucked a few on the lathe, um, some plastic parts. This is actually conduit. Um, I've got another piece here. As you can see, I'll pull it out. So that's all it was. Just a piece of conduit, plastic conduit, and I just cut it to length. Um, it's got the um, electrode, positive electrode on the inside. You can see the wire going to it there. Just an old nail jar, a little bit of a, a I think it's actually a brake line, um, a solid brake line that goes down there. Um, this fitting here was actually one of the outlet uh, bulkheads um, for one of my vapor blasted cabinets, but I actually cut it too short. And it it um, wasn't actually long enough anymore to fit the tap to. Um, so those are all parts that I had used. That one there, I started cutting the thread on the inside of to um, to try and make it a little bit narrower, and I made a bit of a mess on the inside, but it's good enough for, for what I'm doing here. Uh, more scrap brass uh, parts here. They've been um, put in the lathe, drilled out, had different threads in them just to make it all work. And this is an old regulator. I don't even know what it was originally off. Here on the other side here. Don't even know what it was off. Uh, it was sitting in a box, but it seemed to work for what I'm doing. Um, and you can see there, I've just earthed that. I'm um, not too keen on having um, sort of 15 to 30,000 volts hanging around it and then just that metal handle not earthed or anything. So just to try and um, protect me from getting a zap. Very low amperage, so I don't think the risks are too high, but um, it's not pleasant nonetheless. Um, so I've just got some black. Um, powder coat there. The power supply is just this tiny little thing here um, and that's just a I believe it's a 15 to 20 thousand uh, um, volt um, adapter it goes from 12 volts so that's just running off an old uh, I think it's from a router, it's power supply from a router. So like I say very rudimentary but um, 
it suits what I'm doing now for testing purposes. Um, and as time goes on, I'll build an enclosure for it and I'll make it so I can adjust voltages a bit better. Um, but for what I want to do today, this is the bracket off my, uh, my compressor. So I've just um, put it through the sandblaster. It's uh, not perfect, perfect by any means, but uh, it's clean enough uh, for what I want to do now. Uh, like I say, I'm just testing, and as things progress and as I can get a better finish off on it and a, a better um, product, I might do a little bit more information on it in case anybody else wants to uh, copy what I've done. Um, but I mean, it doesn't look bad. It is quite rudimentary, but uh, it definitely does uh, what it's supposed to do functionally. I just have to tidy a few things up with it um, just to get it a little bit more consistent and um, you kind of need adjustability for powder coating um, just because the uh, Faraday cage effect where uh, it won't get into certain parts. Um, I think maybe on... Yeah, you can see it's kind of thin through there. Um, so I want that adjustable voltage um, there's a little bit of adjustability in that, like I say, 15 to 20,000 volts, um, but I want to be able to play with that a little bit more, um, just so I can, um, effectively I've got to learn how to do it, learn what I'm doing first, but um, just to improve uh, the quality of what I'm doing. But like I say, this is the first one I've ever done, um, and, it, and it seems to have come up all right. There's a few imperfections in it, um, mainly because I hadn't prepped the part properly, um, and a few scratches on it already. I've been doing some testing to see whether or not it will flake off or, or whether it's all right. So it seems to have heared quite nicely. Um, but I, I'm going to try and uh, demonstrate with um, this. This is a bracket off uh, my battery bracket from the compressor that I made up. Um, it's old scrap parts, so it's rusty. It looks horrible. And I just want to get it to last a little bit longer. So it um, doesn't really matter how, um, how the finish comes out. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but it's just a little bit of a test piece to see how, how well I can get this set up to work. Um, and like I say, I'll come back later uh, once I've done a little bit more on the power supply. So I'm just going to get set up and then um, we'll, we'll see how it goes with, with these larger pieces. Likely not going to be too ideal uh, with the camera position. Um, but once I get it going a little bit better, I'll get some better footage. Um, so here we are all set up and uh, see how we go. Right, so I was having a few issues with the grounding. Uh, I seem to have got that sorted out. Um, it's all very rudimentary at the moment as I mentioned um, and therefore we um, have a few short circuits every now and again so it's not exactly uh, overly safe at the moment um, but this is just testing purposes and um, I will build an enclosure and tidy it up. Just turn it up a little bit. There we go. Up there, the grounding issue sorted now, so it's going on much quicker. Put a 
swap over for that last one. You can tell I'm still a little bit skeptical, um, just given there's 30 odd thousand volts going through that setup and um, it's kind of a twist and taped, um, very temporary setup so um, I'm very very cautious with it but that's all of the parts that I'm doing for now done and I'm, I'm preheating the oven so um, as soon as I'm ready I'll get swapped over and um, I'll show that going in. Right, so we're all set up over here. I'm just going to pretty much bung these in. Um, still on the testing phase, so I'm not overly worried about um, final finish. I just kind of want to see how, how we're going about things. So I'm pretty much just going to chuck them in. It's a bit thin in places and I've just mixed up some of it. But I'm not too worried at all, to be honest. Um, Hell of a mess of that one. It's all right. This part here is the one that I'm a little more concerned about. I'm just going to dangle this one like this. Bit of a mess, but that's all right. Again, just sort of testing things out and I'll come back and have, a, um, have another go at things at a later date. So while that's in the oven, I just want to cover off a couple of other things that I've been up to. Um, one of them is a question that I'm continually getting and the other is just a bit of an update. So first of all, I'll start off with the update. If um, I just flip this around. Uh, so here we've got... The compressor, it's all back together, all the working parts. Uh, it just needs a, uh, a filter, new filter in it, and obviously the battery clamp's not on there at the moment. Um, really needs a rebuild on the starter motor. It is still working at the moment, but it's a little bit slow. Um, I've had to repair the, the fuel switch uh, on the bottom of the tank there, change some of the wiring, and um, there are another couple of... Um, just small things I want to fix up on it, make it um, a little better. As you can tell, probably from that picture there, I have changed the exhaust. I did decide to go with a lower one, stop it catching on things. Uh, I've got to build the rest of the case and paint it, put it back together. But at the moment, it's working. Uh, now, the second thing, I don't know if you're going to be able to see in here. Um, let me just move that. Here we go. I keep asking, getting asked whether these guns will work in a dry cabinet. Um, now granted this one has a, a pressure feed rather than a siphon feed, but um, it seems to siphon um, just as well as the larger guns. So I figure in a siphon cabinet it should work just as well. Um, but uh, I'll just find something to chuck in there. Uh, yeah, this will do. So I'll just put that in there like that. 
um, and we'll fire this up and if it'll still start the battery is a little bit uh, crappy on at the moment but we'll see how we go just give it a quick glow Finally going. There we go, just does that little thing and that's when it's ready to go. And we just hit the switch. Let's see. There we go, just about six bar. Or open that. Plug that in properly. I think we're all plugged and ready to go in here. Yep, good. Let's try and set it up so you can see. Might move a little bit, sorry. This is about as good as I can get it. I know you can't see very well, but I can clean that up a little bit. And here we go. I don't want to spend too long on it. There we go. Did that quieten down a little bit? So that came up relatively quick. Um, but yeah, that just goes to show that um, those nozzles. Those nozzles will work in a dry cabinet. Um, how long they last, I don't know. These pink tips send not to last that long anyway. Um, this is the one that I have been using in there. And I've tried that one in there as well. Uh, but the reason I put that one in is I must have had probably 10 questions um, as to whether these will work in a dry cabinet. Um, so there's your answer. Um, obviously the aluminium uh, air jet inside will uh, have a hard life. It's probably better off to build one out of um, steel, mild steel or, uh, or something harder uh, just to extend life and remember those pink tips will wear out. Uh, but yep, they will work in a dry cabinet. Um, let me switch that off. A few extra little things left to do on this, um, but as, as you can see, uh, it works as a as a compressor at the moment um, just a few creature comforts need to be put on you probably saw I shut it off um, by manually pulling on that um, that solenoid the solenoid isn't actually um, working the way it's supposed to there's a little control board on the back there um, that was fried so it's actually working com um, just completely manually now it's just a, a regular solenoid so I have to wire it up differently um, so it can be shut off from the control panel here so uh, more work to be done on it, but at this stage if I need to blast something I've got a decent air supply uh, Which means I do have another few projects on um, That I've held off until I've had the extra air uh, Now that I've got it, I'll um, spend a bit of time doing those um, There's a bell housing, it's been sitting outside a few days now so um, But I was able to do that with this compressor you see a bird crap on it with this compressor um, I was able to knock that out in probably a third third of the time um, than it would have taken to do with my old setup um, so yeah still got some more work to be done on it um, but at least I've got a decent supply now there we have it see all those pitted pissing marks from the rust with a scratch down there where I scratched against the um, uh, one of the these bits uh, it's not too bad sure I need to focus a bit yeah
So not bad for uh, an old sandblasting gun, some old regulator, leftover wire, some spare uh, plastic fittings, a couple of brass fittings, and an old jar. Um, really happy with that result. So I'll keep fine tuning and uh, I'll do a bit of reading as well. Um, and I mean these parts they really need to have been sandblasted better or vapor blasted better and then scuffed properly. Um, they were just done really really quickly to get all the rust off and then um, thrown in but um, it's really not that bad. Like I mean it's, it's definitely a good enough um, finish for anything I'm going to be doing. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that came out, considering, I mean, that's just a gun made out of scrap stuff and, um, a couple of cheap, uh, a need of iron generators, I think they call them. Um, they're effectively a high voltage transformer. They go from 12 volt to 15 to 20,000 volt. Um, but like I say, I'll keep fine tuning. Oh yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> I just used the, um, Eastwood hot coat on that um i'm not entirely sure the best place to get um to get powders from in new zealand at the moment i have to do a bit more research but um, that was sort of the easiest to find i don't know what the prices are going to be like that was about 30 dollars um as i mentioned before so about 20 dollars us somewhere around there um so yeah i don't know i'll, I'll do a bit more research on that um play with some different colors and um Obviously I can put that back on the compressor now. So yeah, just a bit of an update of what I've been up to. Uh, this is a project that I've wanted to do for a long time. Once I get this working a little bit better, then I will be doing the uh, the powder coating oven, a large powder coating oven. So uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Thanks for watching.